Today, I take a picture of everyone's favorite Merry Mutants. Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Photo Dave. This is a Red Yeti for color. That's my boring background. And this is Toy Picks. And for today's video, I figured with it being the day before Thanksgiving that I would just record something real chill and walk you through my process as I'm setting up today's photo, which is, again, a photo of the Medicom Mothex X-Men. So, you know, while you're mashing potatoes or pulling cranberries out of the cranberry sauce can, like, fun fact, I just recently heard this, you can pull off both ends and it slides out way easier. So, there's that. Not that I ever cook anything. I'm, uh, I'm the guy that my friends invite to Friendsgiving for, you know, things like cheese balls. What can Dave make? Dave can't make anything. Okay, tell him to bring cheese balls. On it, guys. Anyway, that's what today's video is. So if you need something for background noise, go for it. Or if you're genu genuinely interested in what I'm doing, check it out. I'm good either way. Now, don't forget that the QR code in the bottom corner is for you to scan so you can get your free action figure photography guide as well as get signed up for the Toy Picks newsletter and stick around to the end of the video when you see today's Toy Picks photo. And while there is no Patreon freebie today, sorry, night before Thanksgiving and I'm kind of trying to get things done so I can take a weekend, very strange for me, but I will still talk a little bit about Patreon at the end so you can see what all I've got cooking over there. And now, without further ado, let's get to the video, shall we? Alright folks, let's start this out with what all I'll be using to shoot this photo. So obviously we've got the X-Men and Magneto. This was at a time when they didn't get along so well, so all the X-Men have angry heads going on. I have my iPad over there with the best nightlight app open. It's kind of showing off a slight, maybe a light beige color. I've got my Neewer light panel light over here. That was a lot of light there. But I'm wondering if I should use a gel. I may or may not use a gel. Probably not. I can adjust the brightness and just see what happens there. And then I'm going to be using my 75 to 300 millimeter lens because this is going to be one of those Jim Lee classic posing up a storm shots. They just showed up and they're ready to throw down with Magneto. If I were to do something that was a lot more action oriented and maybe right up on somebody, I'd use a lot of diagonals and I'd use an 18 to 55 millimeter lens just because it's a little easier. Or if you've got it, a macro lens might be a lot of fun with something like that. So now what I'm going to do is stop recording and then in the next part I'll just start showing everybody how I'm posing these things up so let's do it I'm gonna start in the back and work my way forward and I'm gonna start with my second favorite X-Men character Storm now for her we're probably gonna look at pretty much a fairly basic pose something that is just her standing there as poised as can be, because it's Storm, that's kind of how she is. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go a little more, bring her legs in a little more, slight turn, not a lot, and she'll be looking forward. I'm going to have Magneto in the extreme foreground, but she's got her fists, she's not happy. So she's got those going on. Let's see. And yeah, probably something fairly similar to that. I like this ball peg waist. It's able to give her a little more lean, a little more attitude in the body. And then when you combine that with her head maybe looking down some, I think it's a good look. I think I'm a bit of a fan, but it's not quite good enough. Let's bring it back up a little. 
try not to make her fall. This was something that I was going to do when I first started Toy Picks. My very first video I called Happy Guns, and it was with the Moffex Batman. And what it was going to be was kind of a takeoff with the Happy Trees and Bob Ross and all that stuff. And it was basically going to be just talking through, setting up photos and things along those lines, and just whatever thoughts popped into my head as I was doing it. So maybe this is kind of, maybe we can think of this as Happy Guns Part 2. Or not, who knows. But I think what we've got here is a fairly decent storm pose. And what I'm going to do when I get these things posed, I'm going to keep heading back, keep checking the camera. Make sure I can see everybody in there okay. Let's see. Put her back here. Because what I want to do, I want to blur the background. Bend her back just a touch. There we go. I want to blur the background a little bit, keep the X-Men kind of in a line so they're all in focus. And like I said, Magneto in the front, he's not going to be in focus, but I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to blur it too much because I want you to know who he is, kind of, you know? And we'll do, let's see, this is probably pretty good. It's going to be tough looking back at the camera because I'm recording this using my phone as well. So <laughs> basically the camera has to look through the, my phone and see how Storm's looking. But that was just kind of a quick setup with Storm there. Not so quick, but to let you know kind of my thought process as I'm going through this stuff. I, I think about each individual character when I'm posing and setting them up to go after the Master of Magnetism. So... Let's stop the storm aspect and get to Psyche. And now we have Cyclops, the guy that every Wolverine fan loves to hate. Although I haven't been reading too recently, so maybe it's not so bad. We're going to give him a little more of a power pose. You know, tough guy, leader type dude. Although Storm really should be the leader. But that's just this guy's opinion. At this time, she was the leader of the gold team. He was the leader of the blue team. I don't have en enough members of either team to be able to form a proper team shot. So I'm just kind of doing some mixing and matching here. But uh, really, Wolverine should have been on the gold team. And then my favorite two characters with the X-Men would be on gold. And now I'm just babbling. So here's Scott. I'm going to try to... Let's bend this elbow just a little bit, give it a little more action going on. There we go, and then bring this one out a touch. There, now we're looking a little more tough guy psych style. Put him back here a bit. And I've got this piece that goes in his eye beam. I just, <laughs> it's fallen off. So once I'm all set with the pick, I'll put this back in. But right now it's so finicky that if I budge anything, it's going to fall off. And then I'm going to have to start over and kick myself multiple times. Jean here is pretty much in the kind of pose that I think I'd have her in anyway. There's not a lot to her, at least at this point in the comics. One of the great travesties of Marvel Comics is that they didn't allow Jean Grey to stay dead after the Phoenix or the Dark Phoenix saga. But that's again just this person's opinion. But yeah, she's kind of plain. They've tried to make her a lot cooler in the comics as of late, but like I said, I haven't been reading them big time more recently. So I might have to pick up some books and see if they've really improved on Jean's character. So here's a question. If you have been reading the X-Men books, let me know. Do you think Jean is a lot cooler than she used to be? Because way back when, she was just kind of there. Okay. Now, yeah, I think that's pretty close. We might do, let's see, I, I hate when I do that, I might do the whole bring one leg in, bring the other leg, so it's forward, so pull down, and do this, and do kind of the bent thing, just because that's a... That's a Jim Lee staple right there, is having the bent knee over the straight leg. Let's see. Come on. Focus, focus. 
Yeah, so I think I'm gonna do that. But that's a little trickier to just stand up, so I'm gonna do that off camera. And then I'm gonna bring in a little more light, because I notice we're not seeing a whole lot when I'm setting these up, or you guys aren't seeing a whole lot. So, yeah, gonna stand her, bring in more light, and I'll be right back with the next figure. Alright, Jean's a little off screen here, but I realized as I was standing them up that if I want them all facing Magneto, I should reserve one side for Magneto, even though he's going to be in the extreme foreground. You might see some of the X-Men, like, through his legs or something, but they've got to have a place to look, a place to focus on, and Magneto's going to be in this area for them to do that. And for all that to happen, things need to be moved to the side, that's why Jean is now over there, and I'm trying to figure out who's next. Should I do Gumbo, or should I get Psylocke in there? And I'm thinking, eh, you know what? I'm gonna get Gumbo in there, because he's kind of, I mean, he is bar none the best Gumbo, the best Gambit, I suppose, that's ever been made, as far as I'm concerned. But then again, most of these are. I don't I don't know about Cyclops, and Jean is one of my least favorite Moffex figures, but at least when it comes to Gambit, when it comes to Storm, when it comes to Psylocke and Wolverine and Magneto, they're the best out there, at least as far as I'm concerned. Again, that's simply one man's opinion, but one of the things that kind of sucks for me when it comes to Gambit is I love messing with his coat, and he came perfect, he's together perfect, there's no loose joints, everything's great, but he's just tougher to, for me to hit a really cool dynamic pose in a setting like this. If I had some wire and I had him flying through the air or something along those lines, I'd be able to hit something that I think would look pretty cool, but just standing there, what do I do? And so oftentimes what I do is I default to him holding the cards, having his staff behind him, like he's holding that back, like that, he's hunched over, more like this, and I don't think that's a bad look, but then what do you do with the coat, like how do you make the coat super cool? Maybe, let's see, no, that's not enough flare. Let's start it back up here. We're talking office space, not office space, good lord. Yes, we are talking office space. We're talking Aniston with her flare. Clearly, Gambit needs some flare of his own. Good lord, why am I, why am I speaking right now? So, we get some of that going on. We gotta kick up that, kick up that coat, man. I know, you're not seeing much right now, but... I don't want to knock anything over as I'm doing this. Alright, coat's over. Coat's better. A little bit. So now let's bend his legs just a touch. <clears throat> Something along those lines I think works for Gambit here. So... Let's see, this is where now I gotta just mess with the feet a little bit, make sure they're planted well enough, get other things out of my way so I can maneuver, don't fall over, okay. I know, I know, this part, absolutely riveting, but this is kind of, I figure it might help some people to see kind of how I'm thinking about this stuff as I set it up. Gambit's kind of the cool guy from way back when. A lot of people that started reading X-Men around this time really liked Gambit. I don't know what my deal was. I started reading just before they got their training uniforms. You know, the classic blue and yellow kind of with Wolverine and Psylocke and Storm and all them. I started reading just before that. I mean, my first X-Men comic was 273 Uncanny X-Men, and that had all the artists drawing with a ton of characters. That was really, aside from Wolverine, who I was introduced to through Wolverine issue 8, I didn't know anybody else. So there was that. So I just walked into a whole mess of X everything. And so my Psylocke is this 
Psylocke, at least the one that I was introduced into X-Men as being Psylocke. So I do like a lot of other Psylocke's, but let's stop this and then I'll get to posing her up. Alright, so in a shot like this, Betts is going to be posed in kind of her ninja style a little bit. We'll probably have some crouching, well I'll definitely have some crouching going on with her. With the sword kicked back, she's got her hair back like that, she's got her angry face. Ooh, I love when it comes to posing these things, these Moffex figures, I love messing with just about every joint out there. It's not, when it comes to Legends, it's not that I hate Legends, it's just that they don't have enough for me to do when it comes to photography. And I know some people can really make them work, and I've seen plenty of pictures where Legends figures look great. It's just not necessarily my thing. Now, you see that her upper half is actually twisted a little towards this side. What I'm going to do is twist it back this way a little bit more. Give a little more dynamism here. And that way, when her chest, when her torso is set this way, when it's pointing that way, then you can bend the leg. You can make this the forward leg. And I think that'll work better for this shot. And then kick out this leg. So it'll be something along those lines with that crouch that I was talking about. I gotta mess with it a bit. You can get a lot to happen with Betts here. Betts is, she is far cooler, honestly, than she has any right to be. And a lot of it when it comes to the photography is the fact that she, that that blue, I guess, is just so shiny. Like it's a great, it has a great shine to it. Gotta keep, it's tough to mess with this stuff on camera. So if you're ever thinking, geez, Photo Dave, you kind of suck at this. One, that could be true, but two, I really suck at it with cameras. We're with the camera on. Okay. There we go. I wanted this leg, so you can see kind of the pose there. I wanted this leg to go a little lower so you could have even more of an angle with her coming up like that. So... Here we go. I'm gonna make some final little finicky adjustments with Betts, and then we'll get to the star of the show, the old Knucklehead. All right, now I know many of you are thinking, come on, man, Wolverine is not the star of this show. The X-Men are a team, and I totally agree. In fact, I didn't like the vast majority of the X-Men movies because they didn't make them a team. They just focused too much on the old Knucklehead. However, Wolverine issue 8 is the first ever comic I read that wasn't a Transformers or G.I. Joe comic, so the old Knucklehead and I have been pals for a long time, longer than any of these characters, so he does hold a special place in my heart, I suppose. Now, when it comes to him, we all know, especially when it comes to Magneto way back when, Wolverine's kind of an angry guy, so fortunately, Moffex was nice enough to give me this really ultra angry head sculpt for him. Now, what I'm going to do, he's going to kind of be similar to Psylocke a little bit. Not too much, but a bit. I'm going to do that. His head's going to be up. Of course, his claws are going to be up, ready to go. Just looking at Magneto like, oh, it's you and me, bub. Let's see. I always think about Clint Eastwood when it comes to Wolverine for whatever reason. I think I read somewhere that Clint Eastwood was one of the basises for Wolverine, and I always thought that if he were a little shorter, he would have been absolutely perfect. You know, in the 70s. Oh, and... Wolverine has a foot that enjoys falling off, so I have to always be cognizant of that. It's one of the little quibbles that I have with this particular figure, but overall, this is easily the best Wolverine that I've ever owned. I would love to get my hands on the Tiger Stripe, 
Though I would like it if they would make the corrections and make the stripes actually black. <clears throat> Whew. I think I've been talking too much. All right, here we go. We're just about there. Okay. So here's Wolvie. He's going to end up coming back here around Psylocke. He'll be kind of in the foreground with her. And then, once I have him set up, we'll bring on the Master of Magnetism. Woo! 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 Okay, leave it to me to change the angle ever so slightly again, but I figured this was probably the best way to show what I've got going on. So the X-Men back here, they're going to be focused in on. They're going to be very clear. And now Magneto, I don't know if I'm going to have it so that he's kind of way forward like this, or if I lower the tripod and make it so the camera's shooting more up, so that that will elevate him a little bit, or just leave him like that where he's not even facing the X-Men. I kind of like this look, because obviously they're all ready to come after him, and he's clearly ready to defend himself, but why would he even bother? Like, he's basically the Doctor Doom of the X-Men, or of the mutant world, I would say. Why would he even bother with these people? So... I'd have to make sure that it's very clear in the image that they're looking right at him. Otherwise, he could maybe look like he's leading the team, and that's not at all what I want. Now, we could do this, or I could go this way. No, I think I like it more where he's like this. So what I might do is end up doing some adjustments on those figures, making sure that they look exactly like they're coming after Magneto, and shoot the shot. So there you go, folks. That's kind of how I think about setting things up. I'm also going to, in Photoshop, probably add a little bit of haze, just because with cotton, what would happen is it would be way too clear and it would be too obvious that it was cotton. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a haze effect up here. So it looks like they maybe just walked in or just busted in on something. So there you go. I'm going to take the shot, and then I'll be back. Before I actually shoot this thing, I figured I should show you what I ended up having to do to make it work. I actually had to put a table in front of the drafting table with some stuff stacked up to put Magneto there so he's way out in front of everybody else, and I had to group the X-Men up a little tighter. So there was that. I'm just going to set up the lighting, take the shot, and I'll see you in a sec. No Photoshop today, I just figured you might just chill and see my process as I'm trying to figure out how to pose these things and make them happen, so yeah. I guess comment below and let me know if you dig this kind of thing, because if you do, I'll keep it up, and if you don't, I'll still look at the analytics, so if they tell me that you do, I'll keep it up. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm strange like that, and now... On to today's Toy Picks photo, which is just the end result of everything you just saw. For today's photo, well, you pretty much know what it's going to be, so here it is. Now all I really did was added a little bit of haze and put in a selective color adjustment layer, as well as adding a little bit of dark around the borders just to give it a little more contrast. So selective color layer, what that does is it allows me to slide color values so I could find the red channel and make it more red or more cyan or more yellow or more blue or more magenta or more green, whatever, it's, it's that kind of thing. And then the haze layer that I added in is just, I have some brushes in my Photoshop program, because I was struggling to come up with words there, that all I do is I just make them huge and I just stamp one of the brushes on the image and then I go to a motion blur and I really blur that stamped brush. And that tends to give me the haze look I want, because as much as I like using cotton and practical stuff when it comes to haze and smoke and all that, a lot of times when you don't have an insane depth of field or when you're not working on a table that's five or six feet long, that cotton ends up actually looking like cotton. So when it comes to haze, I generally do it in Photoshop. But 
That QR code is there so you can scan it, check out the image, and comment with your own photo of anything you like. Like I said, it's the day before Thanksgiving. Chill. If you even have time to take a photo, you might be sitting there, like, actually cutting a block of cheese. See how I said that? I worded that so there could be no jokes. Now, as for the Toy Picks Patreon page, here's a QR code so you can check it out for yourself. But the majority of things that I put on there are wallpapers that you can use on your desktops or laptops to stand your figures in front of and light them up, put some other stuff up, and shoot them so that you've got a background for them to use, to be in front of, which I guess is the very definition of background. Good lord, I didn't plan this thing out at all. I also put up high-res JPEGs so that if you're, say, a comic shop owner or a toy store owner, a store owner of any kind of pop culture, anything, you can download those high-res JPEGs, use them in your marketing materials, hang them up around the store, whatever you can do to try and make life easier for you, maybe draw in more customers, maybe make more money. And then if you're just somebody that likes the images, you can download them and do whatever you want with them too. And then I put up Photoshop files so that anyone who's trying to study Photoshop or maybe is new to graphic design or has even been doing it for a while can see how I structure layers and decide for themselves if they want to give that way of structuring layers a try. Maybe I do things too complicated for some. Maybe I do things far easier than some. So that's why the Photoshop files are there. And as a bonus, everything I put on Photoshop is free. There's even a free tier. Yes, there are paid tiers, but there's really no reason not to join the Toy Picks Patreon if you dig action figure photography and not just looking at it, but making it happen for yourself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was that. As always, thank you very much for swinging by and checking out the video. It is hugely, massively even, appreciated. And until next time, have fun and happy snapping. And if you're in the US, enjoy the turkey. See ya.